In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Greetings, beloved of the Lord. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Today is Sunday, the 14th of April, 2024. It is the third Sunday of Easter, Church Yebi. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verses 13 to 15 and verses 17 to 19. In those days, Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And now, brethren, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ should suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 4. The response to the psalm is, Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. The second reading is taken from the first letter of St. John, chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. My little children, I am writing this to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the expiation for our sins, and not for us only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this we may be sure that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says I know him, but disobeys his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him, truly love for God is perfected. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 24, verses 35 to 48. At that time, the two disciples told what had happened on the road and how Jesus was known to them in the breaking of the bread. As they were saying this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and supposed that they saw a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled, and why do questionings rise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit has not flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and wondered, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you 
while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is Let our sharing of material food and drink lead us to a spiritual communion. Let our sharing of material food and drink lead us to a spiritual communion. Dear good people of God, the gospel passage of this third Sunday of Easter, Church Year B, is one of the many post-resurrection appearance scenes where Jesus showed himself to his apostles after his resurrection. The pattern is almost the same for all. First, he appeared. Second, he showed himself. Third, they did not recognize him. Fourth, he did something to show himself so that they could recognize him. And fifth, when they had recognized him, they were filled with joy. This seems to be the pattern whenever and wherever Jesus appeared. Jesus did not show himself to them only once. He showed himself over and over and over in different occasions just so they could believe it was he. Yet, they were still always very surprised when next he showed himself after a previous one, though they seemed to have recognized him in the previous appearance. They were slow to understand, and it took them time to comprehend. Yet, Jesus was very patient with their slow understanding and kept on appearing and revealing himself. Before today's episode, Jesus had appeared to the two disciples on their way to Emmaus. Before appearing to them, he had also appeared to the apostles. Now, the two disciples who had had the experience at Emmaus were recounting their story to the apostles who had also had an experience. But behold, when Jesus appeared again, we are told they were frightened, thinking it was a ghost. Had they not seen similar things like this? Could they not recognize? Why were they frightened? Jesus himself asked them, Why are you so agitated? Why these doubts staring in your hearts? Why were they slow to understand and to believe? How many appearances did they want or need in order to understand and believe? Again, in patience, Jesus explains everything to them. He showed his wounds to them. He ate broiled fish in their presence and explained what he had told them. This is what I meant, he said, when I had told you, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms was destined to be fulfilled. And he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Their joy was so great as in previous occasions, yet were he to appear next, they will still be in shock and unable to recognize him. Dear good people of God, this is just to teach us that faith is a journey, a gradual process. It is not everything that happens, especially at just one episode that leads us to faith. There are times that despite how many times Jesus has showed himself to us, despite how many times he has manifested his love to us, we still do not understand. We still do not have faith. And that explains why, when in trouble and difficulty, we doubt. We fear like the apostles. But we should always encourage you, that is our work. 
we who are ministers of the gospel, just like Jesus did to the apostles, in patience and in love, we have to continue encouraging you to journey and to grow in faith. It may take you many episodes before you finally recognize and realize that Jesus is there for you despite your difficulties. Keep on, beloved. Do not be discouraged. Gradually, yet surely, you will come to that realization. In all of these appearance episodes, even if the apostles found it hard at first sight to recognize Jesus when he showed himself, at least they later did, because something always revealed him, and it was food. To the two disciples at Emmaus, they recognized him at the breaking of the bread, food. Now, in today's episode, he asked for broiled fish, food, and he ate before them. At the river Galilee or Tiberias, he found a charcoal fire and asked for some of the fish they had caught. And he put the fish on the fire and invited them for breakfast, food. What is it about food that is always when Jesus ate that they recognized him? At the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve ate a fruit that brought us death. It was in eating that the apostles or the disciples recognized Jesus because this food is a symbol of life. It points us to the Eucharist, the bread and wine of life. As Adam and Eve ate and brought death, he or she who eats Jesus' body and drinks his blood will have life. Jesus uses food as a strong point and symbol to recognize him, a point of contact with his disciples and apostles after his resurrection. Food is therefore a symbol of fraternity, solidarity, communion, reconciliation, and friendship. It is much more than just that food. Many cultures in Africa, even in Europe and America, will agree that food and drink are uniting factors. But because food and drink unite us, the devil is also quick to use food and drink for evil purposes, as many have lost their lives through food poisoning or drink poisoning. But Jesus wants us to see that food and drink mean much more. In material food and drink, we can recognize Jesus in the midst but even much more, can we recognize him in spiritual food, his body and blood? It is therefore ironical to share material food and drink, yet not be able to share love and not to get spiritual communion. How can we share food and drink, yet we don't talk to each other? This explains why some people cannot share food and drink with those with whom they have a grudge. That would be mere pretense. Beloved, Jesus uses food. And it is through that food that his apostles and disciples recognized him after his resurrection. Through material food, we come to spiritual communion. It is much more. When we sit to share a bottle of drink, when we sit to eat together, beloved, it is much more. That material food must lead us to spiritual communion. Our material sharing must therefore lead us to recognize Jesus in his spiritual communion. Because when we share together, Jesus is in the midst. And how can we share together yet not love one another? The church is therefore wise to say, we make the sign of peace before communion at every holy mass. Because that spiritual food is meant to strengthen our bond and to unite us. How can we go to receive Jesus, to eat him in that spiritual food when we have not first made reconciliation with one another? Then it will be pretense. How can you receive communion, yet talk to a fellow Christian or not forgive your neighbor? How can you receive communion, yet you talk so ill and so much evil about a fellow brother or sister? Dear God's good people, Jesus teaches us a great lesson. Through our material sharing, through material food and drink, we can build a strong spiritual bond, a strong bond, a communion. Because when we sit to share together, Jesus comes to be amongst us and we can recognize him in that sharing. 
That is the reason why in most African cultures, it is in food and drink that we make reconciliation. It is in food and drink that we build friendship. Let us therefore, like the apostles and disciples, be able to recognize Jesus in our midst when we share food and drink. Let that sharing of material food and drink lead us to a spiritual communion, to build strong bonds of love, of friendship, of peace, and of solidarity. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.